What is up guys, it's Chazzles, and I've been seeing a lot of Valheim content going around the internet lately, um, and I'm going to be honest dude, a lot of it is just kind of clickbaity horse shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I figured I would start doing my own uh, tutorial videos because it's, I don't know dude, it's starting to get on my nerves. I have over 300 hours in the game, I've been streaming it since day one, um, and yeah. So I'm just going to do a, a start out with like a basic guide on like what you should do when you hop into Valheim. So here's my guy here, Leif Erikson, because uh, he's going to, you know, explore the new world. I did already build a house on this world, but I'm just going to use the same world. So we'll go ahead and start. Leif Erikson is a new character. The only thing I did on that world was build a house. There's no items for me there or anything. I just named the world Chazels, the random seed and start. So here we are flying into the world, dude. We're gonna drop down. And oh my god, did they change that? Those uh the feet look different for the Valkyrie. Kinda nuts. It looks all bloody and stuff. I don't know if that's if I don't I don't remember if it was like that before. Apparently in the original version of this game, this Valkyrie just looked like a like an anime character. <laughs> like <laughs> Basically, you know, if you can imagine a woman instead of a bird, you know, as an animu. So yeah, you'll talk to Hugin here. He's going to teach you how to do stuff. Wow, these are the sacrificial st stones. The first thing you'll do is you'll go like this, and he'll show you where Ikthir is. Ikthir is always right near spawn here, okay? He's, uh, somewhere within, like, this kind of radius here, right? Uh, so... Just keep talking to Ugin here. He'll tell you all about the stones, and, and then they, they, uh, give you hints about the worlds, and they were left here, um, by other, other people that were here before, and etc, etc. You know, he'll give you hints and tips about the game, all that stuff. So anytime you see him, talk to him, he'll tell you a little bit about something. He'll give you some, some hints, some tips. Uh, but what we're going to do first is we want to find a good spot to settle down near spawn. We want to... Uh, there's, there's different biomes and stuff here. Um, usually right outside the meadow will be black forest somewhere within here, right? This meadow area isn't going to go forever. Um, typically, right outside of the meadow, the closest thing you'll get is Black Forest. You don't really want to go into the Black Forest right away. Um, there's nothing... I mean, you can, but there's nothing you can really get from there right away. Um, the first thing you want to do is just kind of go around. You want to collect stones. You'll see it unlocks recipes. Uh, and what you really want to find is a water source like this, right? Because what you find here is flint. So that's kind of where you want to set up camp for the first time. Because the flint is going to help you a lot. And you'll see in a second here. Um, if you're used to playing Minecraft or something like that, you'll, your first instinct is probably to punch the trees, right? Well, you can't really... The big trees like this, you cannot cut them down with your fists. You'll need to go around. Uh, you'll, you'll want to collect wood, yes. Um, but you'll need to be punching these trees here the smaller ones to get the wood from those and there will be branches laying on the ground that you'll pick up and then there you see we unlocked these crafting recipes here we got torch uh, stone axe club and hammer we'll be able to create a stone axe right but eventually we're gonna want the flint axe right You're, the flint is gonna be very important for us early game um, you could create a club first if you want to. That is also a thing that you could do. Um, I'm just gonna... I like this area here. It seems pretty safe and well protected. It is right near spawn. Obviously, if you're playing on like a multiplayer server, you don't want to build next to spawn. But if you're, on, if you're in your own world, you know, we'll just go ahead and kind of set up camp here. So let me punch some trees for a little while. And then we'll move on to the next part of what to do. 
And as you can see, when I punch, I gain I gain skills. Okay, uh, that that ding, it's like a ding where I'm leveling up, right? It's kind of like Skyrim skills. Uh, you when you do when you do actions in the game. Uh, it gives you experience. You can go to your skills right here, and this is your experience bar, this little red part here, right? You can see my run is level 3, my jump is level 1, and my unarmed is level 7 because I've been punching a lot, right? And you, more of these will unlock as you do things. Uh, so kind of pay attention to the screen a little bit, but you'll, you'll kind of know uh, when you main a weapon or, or do something a lot of times, like jump or run, you know, these skills will level up. But... As you die, if you die, you lose about 10% of those of the last skill that you use, I believe it is. But yeah, you'll want to try as best as you can to not die, right? So Ugin's over here. He wants us to do something. Most items must be crafted. So yeah, he's just gonna say, you know, pick up pick things up, blah blah blah. And also make sure you're getting these dandelions, if you just keep these dandelions, you're going to want those later. Definitely keep them. He's going to tell you you get wet, you get cold. There's different status effects that you can get. There's there's freezing, there's burning. And he's telling you you can make shelter to stay warm. So basically, if you have a... Um, if you make a four-wall house that protects you from the elements with a roof on it, uh, that will keep you like one level warmer. So if you're if, so if you're in an area that's freezing, and you make a house, then you'll go down to cold. If you're in an area where you're cold, uh, you will go down to just being normal, right? And then beyond that, I think is like comfortable, where you get a comfort level of one for for stuff. And the comfort level is a whole different thing. When you have so many things that increase your comfort, it'll increase your comfort level, which will make you have a rested status. So we got wood. So next thing we're gonna wanna do is we want to create this hammer here so that we can start crafting things. Okay, so now you can see we can make things for stockpiles. So we're going to start by making a workbench. I usually like to keep this on one just because it's easier that way. And you can see all these things that we unlocked just by making the crafting bench there because we already picked things up. Right? We got a piece of resin. You get the resin from these smaller trees. Here, um, I don't believe you get resin from the bigger trees, but you get them from the smaller trees and you get them from fighting the enemies that you find out here, um, which I'm sure we'll see one eventually. So I'll want to get a little bit more wood here. Okay, so now that we have enough wood, I believe, we have 14, that should be enough for what I'm trying to do here. So this is uh, my like quick, quick and dirty crafting bench so that I can, you know, use it for just field stuff. Like I could repair with this on a road um, or, you know, things like that, right? So this, you do the angles like this, you have your crafting bench inside, kind of in, inside of this, and then you put your roofs on, like this. Typically you'd need this enclosed more than this, but this is like I said, this is what I use to be able to use this workbench. You can see if I delete one of these roofs, I can, oh, I can use it right now. Yeah, so I guess you don't need all that, but that's typically what I do for like a little like outpost station. Um, so that I can use this workbench now, right? And this is really useful. If you want to do like an outside camp thing, it just looks nice, you know, and you can, you got little attachments that you can put on your workbench as well later. Um, that you might be able to see now. I'm not sure, yeah. So eventually we'll put this chopping block down, which you can see there, we need flints, right? So you'll put this chopping block down and that'll upgrade your workbench. 
and you'll be able to after you craft something you'll be able to upgrade like you can see right now we can upgrade our hammer right but we need this is our required station level here so for each for each uh thing with a star here you can see this has got a star on it this is a chopping block it doesn't need to be the chopping block you don't need to do the chopping block first but you can see down there um i can't go click down there it won't let me but you can see it says workbench improvement um, this just counts as one workbench improvement, so it's one upgrade for your workbench. So if there was other things that had stars on them that said workbench improvement, you could do that one first, or you know a different one. Um, but it would only count as one level for your for your workbench upgrade, right? Collect more stone and flint, kind of near the riverbed that we got going here. You'll find the flint um, in the meadows only. So this will be the first thing that we make here is our flint axe. We need six flint, four stone. And this is an oak tree right here. You cannot cut this down yet. See, it says too hard. Uh, you cannot cut that down yet until later in the game. Uh, you'll just need a, you'll need a different upgraded ax to do that. I try not to make things too spoilery because the way the game is designed uh, all the progression and stuff is very, very, uh, just well designed and it's quite an experience to just go through the progression of everything. So if you hear me saying like that thing later in the future, like stuff like that, you know, I've, I've already beaten the game. I already know what it all is. Um, I'm just not going to, I'm going to try my best not to spoil things if you guys want to like follow the guide and stuff, you know what I mean? So be careful when you're cutting down trees because this kind of stuff will happen. This is actually good uh, that this happened because these trees will fall on you and do a lot of damage to you. And you also got to watch out for these guys. Luckily, they're kind of made out of wood, so the axe does a lot of damage to them. And they're always good to go pick up their stuff too because they'll drop this resin that you'll need. Basically, everything in the game is, is useful. You'll want to store it to some capacity and kind of remember where it is. See, our flint axe has taken some damage. There's a repair button right here. Yeah, it says repair station level there. See under durability? It says repair station level one. That is the station level that you need to be at in order to repair that type of weapon. So that means if you have a higher end higher end gear you need a higher end crafting station to be able to repair that stuff right we'll just keep chopping down trees here getting wood for a little bit oh and one thing i kind of skipped over okay so these uh these bushes here will have berries and stuff in them you definitely want to pick those right away uh whenever you see them we didn't really come across any like here's some berries on this bush here They'll regrow. Uh, typically, you don't want to cut down these berry bushes because I don't know how they grow back. You cannot make them. You cannot make berry bushes in the game. You will have to go out and forage for the berries. And there's boars over here. Um, you want to be careful of them, but you will need to be killing them. And you can either craft a club to kill them, or you can just use the flint axe like I'm doing here. Like I said, you gotta be careful not to die. These boars are tricky, man. You can block with right click like this. Um, and there's also a parry, but we'll go over the combat uh, after we get our house set up. Right now, we're just kind of trying to get started. We're just trying not to die, right? We found a snack. Yes, we did. So we consume the snack, it increases our, this one specifically, we'll just go with this. The raspberry gives us 10 health, 10 extra health, 
and 20 extra stamina. And for 600 seconds, we get 1 HP per tick. And this degrades over time, so it will slowly go back down to our default of uh, 25 or 26 HP. Uh, if we don't eat. And you can eat three meals, right? So you can eat three different types of food. So I could eat this raspberry and this meat after I cook it, right? And you can see here we're 290 out of 300 for our wood, right? So what we can do, we can come over here and we can go to our thing and do a wood stack. We just create a little wood stack here. Just stockpile our wood. So there we have a hundred wood. Now we know we have a hundred because we see two of them, right? So we have a hundred and thirty-four wood. We'll just need a little bit more. And if you guys see these stones here, these rune stones, if you read them, it says boars out of the compendium. This land is hard and wild, but we who are brought here are harder, harder still. Uh, traveler, in the gifts before you, the good wood and stone, the fruits and flowers of the forest look also to the wild boar who roam these lands. They fear fire and the hand of man, but they can be taught to obey it. Go quietly to them and let them eat your stock. Roots of the ground are their pleasure. So this is telling you that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's hinting towards that you can tame the animals, right? We don't know how to do that yet, but we will, we will be doing that. Uh, in another episode in the future. These are necks. Uh, you will want to be killing them as well for their neck tail. That is also a meat that you can cook. So you can see here, now we have three different items from the menu, from the meadows that we can consume, right? While I'm walking over there, this is how I kind of sort out my inventory, right? I usually put all my food items over here, because I press, I like to press tab to uh, go in and look at things. Like, I'll kind of sort out my inventory a little bit like this, where, you know, these are things I got from trees or whatever. You know, I'll put them all together. If I get weapons, weapons all go up here, weapons and tools. And then my armor kind of goes in this area here, right? We got our rag tunic on that you start with. And then usually I have my three foods that I'm going to eat right here. So they're very easily accessible. As soon as I press tab, I know I'm going to go to the left. Eat, 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 you know? Because you can, you can catch fish with your bare hands as well, but it's very tricky to do. Uh, one thing about the neck, they only spawn in the meadows, as with the boars. The necks will always be in these areas with the lily pads on the ground and the reeds in like little pond areas like this. So you'll find necks in this kind of area. Since we got uneven ground here, I can show you guys what you can do about that, okay? So you got these little wood poles that act as supports. Um, you can set a wood pole down and kind of, you make your like frame for your house, right? So we can go like this, that's one, two, and then three, Four, four, right? And we can keep connecting these here, but you can see this one won't quite touch the ground. The importance of this is we want this to be blue um, because that will help support these here. The colors kind of go blue, then green. Blue means it's, co it's connected to the ground. That is the most supported you can get is blue. Um, green is the next one, this, this green color here. So you'll want to make sure you support your house in a way um, if you're going to build very tall or, you know, just in general, like you wouldn't be able to build out this wood beam all the way out to here. Like if I delete this, these are going to start falling. See how that turned red, that turned orange, that one's green, that one's green, but it's going to slowly get worse and worse. This one's probably going to just fall. Okay, that one didn't fall. But if we do another one of these, this will most likely fall. Yeah, see that just breaks and it falls. So you need to make sure you support your structures. I kind of, for the beginning house here, I go every two. And then we can go to our longer wood pole here. And that will go into the ground a little bit. And we can support it like that. So that's how we're going to kind of tackle this terrain right now. Uh, just kind of by doing this.
You know, maybe we'll make stairs down here into the little dock. How about we do that? And the stuff, the, the pieces do snap when you go to corners and stuff. You can fiddle around with this a lot. If I hold shift, I can put this wherever I want. And it's going to try to attach to the terrain in front of me. To the best that it can. And it's going to just kind of guess where I'm trying to place this. And do it that way. You can rotate with middle mouse button, scrolling it. Um, I'm not sure what it is on controller. It seems a little hard to build on controller, to be honest with you. You'll have to figure that one out. And you can see already we kind of need more wood just for our frame, right? You don't need to go all out on this. You can just delete these, by the way, with uh, middle click if you click in your middle mouse button. And when you delete it, you get the whole stack of wood. So we had one left over. We got our stack from our 50. So this has already taken us 50 wood just to do this so far. The game is a little bit of a grind, so you'll have to be patient with it. And just kind of, you know, hang out, do your thing. It's very old school in that regard where it's, nothing is going to be rushed. You're not going to rush to do anything. There we go. All of our stuff is green on our base. We should be good to go to build on top of this. No problem. So here we'll do our wood floor. We're going to put a torch down temporarily here. To build that, you need two resin and two wood. And like I said, you get those the resin from those small trees. You get them from fighting those guys, uh, the gray dwarfs. Uh, they will drop the resin as well. And keep in mind, your hammer also uh, gets used up as you build, right? So remember to repair that every once in a while. Mine's about to run out. And you'll kind of want, like, the same with Minecraft, right? You wouldn't want to build your house, like, in a one-by-one one block, right? So you, I usually build up two walls just because it feels better. You could absolutely build just one floor like this and just call it a day if you want to be very space efficient. But I will be building it taller than this. Maybe not by this much, but I'll do a half wall. I'll do a half wall. That's just going to feel more spacious be more realistic I guess this is kind of a good time to to talk about combat at, at least since I already destroyed those guys as you saw that little uh, icon above their head see how he's got no icon above his head right now now he's got that little yellow icon okay he's he's heard something he's seen something he knows something's up but he doesn't know where I am yet okay and I'm holding control I press control I go into sneak and you get this little eyeball uh, for sneaking. You can level up this skill as well. Now he has no idea where I am. He, does, he He's not even aware of my existence. Now he is again. He's a little cautious. My sneak skill is not that high, so he knows something's up. He hears me rustling around in the bushes, right? Now he knows. He saw me. He knows where I am. That was what the red excl exclamation point is. He's coming to get me now, right? So that's an explanation of that. That wasn't actually in the first build of the game. They added that in uh, to make it a little bit easier to tell when uh, you've aggroed enemies and when you haven't. Personally, I preferred it the other way where you could just kind of play it by ear. But if a log winds up in the water like this, you can push it, you know, somewhere and, and hit it. But be careful with swimming. Because if you run out of stamina while you're swimming you will start taking damage until you can stand again. Which will obvi obviously cause you to perish. So, be careful doing that, because a lot of times you'll be running around, you'll have no stamina, and then you'll go to swim, and then you'll start taking damage, right? Just make sure you have your stamina up. I have a feeling this tutorial is going to go awry at some point. 
See, and watch out for that because the trees can do damage to the other trees that can do damage to the other trees and just cause a big old chain reaction. You don't want to be anywhere near that. Now, your crafting bench here has a radius that you can build in. See this little white line here? This is the radius that you're allowed to build in. As long as you're standing in here, you can build out here. But if you're standing out here, you cannot build. So here's where you can build, here's where you can't build. So it matters where you're standing. Um, you can see that my radius kind of goes around my building over here and out here so we can build over this way, fine. We're fine to build right here, that's what I'm gonna do. Anything you build, you will want to make sure that you have a roof over it. Because if you don't have a roof over it, then it will take damage from weather up to 50% of, uh, it'll take damage up to 50% of its thing. So if you go to your, if you go to your hammer for the building, um, I think maybe you have to turn this on the, in the menu, but I have mine on where you right click to do the build selection right here. So, so I right click and I can now select this stuff, right? If you go to the repair tool, you can repair your stuff. I have nothing that needs repairing right now, but there's a lot of times that it storms in this game and stuff. It'll do damage to your walls and all that. Mobs will come attack it sometimes. And you'll need to make repairs. Um, so make sure, also if it's in the water, it's going to take damage up to 50% as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, you cannot currently do anything about that stone anything in the water will take damage up to 50 percent you're just gonna have to deal with that just protect it from mobs at that point it won't go past 50 percent oh that's a little annoying yeah we don't like that this is why i like to use the wooden the gates so we're gonna just replace this with a gate is what we're gonna do we're gonna replace this just one door with a gate and we're going to make the rest into these here. I pretty much never use the doors, honestly. Okay, so we got our little area here for us to live in for the moment. And now we'll need to make a bed. So we'll put a little bed down here. You can put this bed on stilts. Um, that way... If you do this, you can put some flooring down here. And then you put your bed. I'll just put one here for good measure because I like it to look right and all uniform. So we put our bed on top of here and now we can put a chest underneath it. We can put a couple chests down here and kind of have storage underneath our bed, right? What, 300 wood that we've used just for this little simple area? So we'll we'll put our bed here, right? There's Ugin talking about our bed. He says, sleep the night away in your bed and awaken feeling refreshed and full of energy. So you can't sleep through the night um, but not while mobs are nearby. And that sets your spawn point, just like usually, you know, in all survival games, it kind of does that. You know, just like Minecraft, etc., etc. Um, and you will respawn here when you die. Because you will die eventually. There's no way you're going to play this game for the first time and just never die. So be, be careful everywhere you go, kind of that's far away from your base, make sure you build a bed. If it's unsafe, build a bed there. That way you can make sure that you respawn there. But don't get yourself trapped there either. And you know, we'll get to that later in like more intermediate tutor tutorials where we go out and explore more past the meadows, right? It's not gonna allow me to just sleep in this bed without a roof. If you have trouble with the graylings um, at first, then what you can do, you can kind of trick the AI 
Because their movement is kind of like, if you go after them, they'll run away. Um, and then they'll come eventually attack you, right? If you stay here and just turn around like this, they will come attack you immediately. And then if you're just looking in this direction behind you, you can turn around and hit them like that. So, it's a good way to kind of bait them in and then attack them. I'm going to get some more raspberries. I'm going to make sure I eat. Okay, we slap our last piece of roof down. Now, with the roof like this, as long as you have roof uh, covering all of your stuff, it won't take damage. So this roof here will protect this stuff and everything below it. As long as there's a roof over it, it will protect everything underneath it. Regardless of if you see the rain going sideways or whatever, it will protect your stuff as long as you have a roof over it. So now we'll be able to set our spawn point here. And if it was nighttime, we would be able to sleep. But here you see our bed needs a nearby fire, right? So our next step here, we're going to go set up a little camp outside. You can build a fire inside, but you cannot build it uh, on here. You cannot build it on the wood. So you would have to like delete this floor, put it underneath there, whatever. And if you do that, be careful. You will need to make a chimney, which is something that we'll be doing, you know, in a later episode. But you can make a chimney outside of your building. You just got to be careful because there's smoke physics. It will fill up your entire house with smoke <laughs> and you will suffocate and die of the smoke. See, there's a little hut right here. If you ever find anything like this, if you go inside. There's nothing inside. No, I'm just kidding. Usually, so, well, not usually, but a lot of the time there will be a chest in here um, that you can loot some stuff. You'll, you know, probably some gold, maybe some arrows. And sometimes there's a beehive hanging out here. So you got to be careful and watch out for that too because that will poison you. But if you see a beehive, uh, make sure you kill that beehive and collect what is inside because it will be important. We'll go over here. We'll build a little campfire right here. It should be close enough to our bed. Yes. And I accidentally went to sleep. It's okay, we were tired. And then we'll want to make one of these cooking stations now. Uh, typically what I like to do is build these sideways, like exactly how it's presented here, not like this. Because it makes it easier. You can put at least two of these together next to each other like that. They have to be over the fire. Be careful not to burn yourself on the fire too because it's very easy to catch yourself on fire there. And all we have to do now is, you know, you can either put the item that you want to cook in your inventory there and press four on these. Um, and you'll want to be standing on this side. Uh, like I said, it just makes it easier because you have to watch that they don't burn as well. But even if they're in your inventory here, it'll just take whatever is the first item when you click it with E and it'll put it on the fire. And now we're we're cooking all this stuff. We gotta wait for it to cook. There will be a, a flash of smoke that indicates that it is cooked. So there the neck tail is cooked. We click it there, click that, these are all cooked. We're all good. You know, if you don't cook if you don't click them, I'll show you what happens. And there we go. We got coal. Which allows us to build a sign. We can build a little sign for our house. And when you build these signs, uh, make sure that they're facing this way, the dot on it, right? So we can put a sign up here that says, you know, no soliciting. There we go. No soliciting. Now we don't have to worry about anybody trying to sell us stuff at our, at our little house that we just built. Um, so yeah. So now we got our bed, we slept, we got our food. 
And you can see that the grilled necktail gives us a lot more health than this. Um, so the meats, the cooked meats, usually give you more health, more stamina. Um, I think typically fruits, fruits and veggies will give you more stamina and meats will give you more health, but the meats are just kind of overall better, especially early game. Like you see this gives us 35 health and 20 stamina. This gives us 40 health and 30 stamina. So if we eat all three of these, as opposed to the, when we eat one of those, we go up to about 30 health, right? If we eat our necktail, we go up way higher. So that's about 75. And then we eat this and we got way, way more health. So it's important to stay healthy, right? It's very important to stay healthy in the game. You can see there we have much more stamina to run around with and use all our stuff. Uh, we can sit here and farm run for a while if we wanted to. And our health is slowly ticking up. These things stack, so we're getting the two health points per tick here. And I think this one gave us one health point per tick and this gives us one health point per tick, so we're getting four per tick. Another thing we can do to increase that is we can sit by the fire. You can see we're resting at a comfort level of one by the fire. And we have five minutes of rusted status, which also helps us uh, heal and you know we'll have increased stamina and all that stuff. If we sit in here, we have a comfort of four because we're inside of a house, we have a bed, there's a fire nearby. You know, we have a chest, I think, is another thing that will increase this. And we'll obviously touch up the roofs here and stuff too. But yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how you go for a little while here. And you'll just keep building up your base here. You'll want to put some defenses down. Um, we can put these stake walls down to protect our whole base. If we go like this all the way around and we can protect our base, these stake walls work pretty good. So we're not going to do that for now because we don't have enough wood, but I will, uh, what I'll do is I'll cut the video here and we'll kind of set up some defenses and then we'll move from there. Thank you.